Okay, space peeps. So you're probably wondering why in the world am I dressing up all weird like this right now? Oh, I have reached a whole new level of crazy. Um, well, I'm doing it because I want to talk about the Artemis mission, which is the new NASA mission that's going to be going to the moon. We're going back to the moon. I'm super excited about that. So to celebrate, I decided to come to my favorite park where I came for the New Horizons mission. And this time I wanted to try and dress up like the SLS, the space launch system. But I realize it's not all silvery like this, like the cliche metaphorical like spaceship. It's actually like orange and white, but like whatever, it's okay. So um, we're going back to the moon and I cannot wait to talk to you guys all about it. So I first got excited when I found out that the mission is called Artemis because that name holds a very special place in my heart, but also because um, Artemis in Greek mythology is actually the twin sister of Apollo. And Apollo was the program that had um, astronauts going to the moon way, way, way back when. Um, so back in the 60s and 70s. And that was during the Apollo mission. Originally, the SLS was going to be built for the United States to be able to send astronauts from U.S. soil all over again um, into space. It was originally meant for going to the International Space Station um, rather than paying $81 million per seat to Russia to use the Soyuz capsule. Um, and so they were looking to actually build the SLS for that purpose. But now there's actually been um, a mandatory uh, date of 2024 for NASA to get um, specifically American astronauts back to the moon. So let's talk about how far along we actually are in getting ourselves back to the moon and um, if it's really gonna be happening by 2024. So now for starters, in order to get humans to land on the moon again, there's actually gonna be three missions total in the Artemis mission. So first, Artemis 1 is going to be launching not only the lunar module, but it's also gonna be preparing for the lander for once the humans actually will arrive by the third mission. That's aiming to be done around 2020. Uh, right now, there's actually most of the propulsion, most of the rocket for SLS is actually already developed and it's already ready to go. Um, oh, there's final touches being made on Orion right now. And this is what's really exciting too, because the Orion spacecraft is being conjoined now with development parts from the European Space Agency. So we're So we're now partnered with Europe for specifically this mission to make it possible. I'll give you guys a breakdown of all the different rocket parts and how far along we've come with each of the parts. In a now, looking at the mechanics of the SLS specifically, it's actually very much modeled after the space shuttles during the space shuttle program. For instance, it contains the RS-25 space shuttle main engines, as well as the solid rocket boosters attached on the sides. Now, there's three flight sets of five-segment solid rocket motors. Drawing it out here, we see those RS-25 engines, as I mentioned, in addition to the solid rocket boosters attached on the sides that are used for that extra thrust during takeoff. Now, those boosters burn through 3 million pounds of propellant in two minutes. And once the fuel is burned through completely, they will then separate from the main body of the SLS and fall back down to Earth over the Atlantic Ocean as the SLS continues to put Orion into orbit. Which, speaking of Orion, right here is actually where it'll be located at the very top of the rocket. And that's where the crew of two to six astronauts will be and or any payload um, that's going to be needed for the mission. Now, taking a further look inside of the SLS, you have that bottom part where the main engines are located. And then you have the liquid hydrogen tank, the intertank, and the liquid oxygen tank, which both get filled up at about T minus 10 minutes to countdown. And then you have the forward skirt. Now this up here is actually what connects the main body of the SLS to the solid rocket boosters. Now this does remain intact even once the solid rocket boosters separate and fall back down to earth. Now, at about T minus 12 seconds, thousands of pounds of water are released under the engines to absorb the vibrations, the shock and the heat from the engines that ignite at about T minus five seconds. The engines take about five seconds to reach 100% power, and so by T minus zero, it is liftoff of the SLS. And at around one minute and 34 seconds, the vehicle reaches something known as maximum aerodynamic pressure, aka max Q. This is actually when the force acting on the rocket is at its greatest, and so the rocket has to work its hardest to get out into Earth's atmosphere, out of Earth's atmosphere, and then into orbit. Now, lastly, 
at about T plus three and a half minutes, Orion, so that means three and a half minutes after takeoff, um, the Orion capsule with the ICPS engine is going to separate from the SLS. So Orion has that extra engine on there so that it's able to maneuver and control and, and move and get into orbit um, even after it separates from the launch vehicle, um, the SLS. And so once it separates from the SLS and continues into space for its that designated orbit, then the SLS will fall back down to Earth over the Pacific Ocean. And there we go. And then Orion continues to continue with the Artemis mission and head on over to the moon.